Welcome to our show, The China Briefing. Today, we're diving into the rising anxiety within Australia's defence community as Donald Trump's potential return to the White House looms over the AUKUS submarine deal. Experts are expressing concerns about the stability of the Australia-US alliance, fearing that a Trump administration could complicate defence strategies in the Indo-Pacific region. However, despite these worries, there remains a sense of optimism that the AUKUS project will persevere due to its bipartisan support. In a rather intriguing twist, we explore the historical parallels drawn between Trump's potential election victory and the infamous gunpowder plot of 1605. With promises to make America affordable again, Trump aims to tackle inflation through tariffs on foreign goods, particularly from China. Critics are skeptical about the feasibility of his plans, arguing that they may lead to increased prices and labor costs. Yet, some economists believe that efficiencies could mitigate these impacts, suggesting there might be a method to his madness after all. Lastly, we turn our attention to Prime Minister Anthony Albanese's ambitions for Australia to attract private investment in the wake of potential changes to US green energy policies under Trump. Albanese is keen to promote Australia as a stable investment option, especially if the Inflation Reduction Act is repealed. With abundant resources at its disposal, Australia is looking to strengthen trade relationships with key nations, positioning itself as a vital player in the future economy of the Pacific region. Please stay tuned for more detailed insights. South China Morning Post, the potential re-election of Donald Trump has sent ripples of concern through Australia's defence community, particularly regarding the multi-billion dollar AUKUS submarine deal formed with the US and the UK. Analysts like Nick Bisley express unease about the future direction of US foreign policy under Trump, fearing it may destabilize the Indo-Pacific region and complicate the partnership aimed at countering China's influence. Despite assurances from Australian leaders that the AUKUS pact enjoys bipartisan support, there are lingering worries about its long-term viability as Trump's transactional nature might lead to unexpected demands. While some experts believe that AUKUS will remain intact, they caution that Australia must be prepared for Trump's unique approach to foreign relations, particularly in defence cooperation, where increased spending is expected to align with Trump's interests. South China Morning Post, the article reflects on Trump's ambitious economic plans, which echo historical events like the gunpowder plot of 1605, suggesting a potential upheaval in the American political landscape. With a promise to combat inflation and implement steep tariffs on foreign goods, including a staggering 60% on Chinese imports, Trump's strategy raises eyebrows among economists who see contradictions in his goals. While tariffs may inflate prices and disrupt labor markets, Trump aims to revive American manufacturing by enticing foreign companies to relocate production to the US. This approach not only seeks to restore America's industrial might but also aims to reshape global economic dynamics, positioning the US against China's growing influence. The article suggests that Trump's methods, albeit unpredictable, could yield significant shifts in the global balance of power. Australian Broadcasting Corporation, in light of Trump's potential policy shifts, Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese is seizing the opportunity to attract foreign investment by promoting Australia as a reliable alternative for businesses potentially deterred by Trump's climate policy rollbacks. During his trip to South America, Albanese highlighted Australia's wealth of natural resources essential for the 21st century economy and expressed optimism that the repeal of the Inflation Reduction Act could redirect billions in private investment towards Australia. As global leaders gather for the APEC summit, Albanese emphasizes the importance of strengthening trade relationships in the region, particularly with China and Indonesia, while navigating the complexities posed by Trump's trade strategies. He asserts that Australia is well positioned to thrive economically amidst shifting global dynamics, underscoring the significance of regional partnerships in a rapidly evolving geopolitical landscape. South China Morning Post reports on the burgeoning presence of mainland Chinese food and drink chains in Hong Kong, highlighting the recent opening of Chaji, a milk tea specialist that has rapidly expanded from its origins in Yunnan. With over 5,000 stores globally, Chaji's expansion into Hong Kong is seen as a strategic move to tap into the city's international business environment. Other brands, such as Tatia Presso and fine dining establishments like Xing South Beauty, are also making their mark, 
providing a mix of culinary experiences that reflect the growing trend of mainland chains setting up shop in the city. However, this influx raises questions about the impact on local dining culture, as traditional eateries face challenges amid the rise of these globalized chains. A poignant example is the closure of Tan Tan Shao, a small restaurant known for its community-focused initiative of offering free meals, replaced by a mainland dumpling chain. In the realm of football, South China Morning Post highlights the strides made by Hong Kong's team, who secured a 3-1 victory over the Philippines, bolstered by standout performances from players like Matt Orr. This win is crucial for improving their FIFA ranking and enhancing their prospects for the 2027 Asian Cup qualifiers. Meanwhile, the English national team, despite benching captain Harry Kane, achieved a convincing 3-0 win against Greece, showcasing the depth of talent within their ranks. Italy also progressed in the Nations League, with Sandro Tonali scoring in a significant match against Belgium. The report further notes China's resurgence in World Cup qualifiers, with Zhong Yuning's last-minute goal against Bahrain reigniting hopes for their first World Cup appearance since 2002, alongside South Korea's Sun Heung Min marking his 50th international goal. The Australian Broadcasting Corporation sheds light on the troubling dynamics between academia and national security in Australia, as academic Amy King criticizes the domestic intelligence agency for creating an atmosphere of fear around research on China. King, who has faced scrutiny from security services for her interactions with Chinese scholars, warns that this securitization hampers the country's understanding of China and diminishes necessary expertise for informed policymaking. The agency, ASIO, is under pressure to address foreign interference, particularly in academia, where concerns about intellectual property theft and espionage have been raised. While some academics acknowledge the need for vigilance, they also express concern over ASIO's heavy-handed approaches, fearing that the balance between security and academic freedom is being jeopardized. The ongoing tension illustrates the complexities of navigating international relationships and the implications for educational institutions in Australia. South China Morning Post reports on the inspiring journey of British-born Chinese singer-songwriter MUI Zayu, whose real name is Eva Liu Wei Kyun. Growing up in a predominantly white environment in Kent and Surrey, Liu struggled with her cultural identity, feeling disconnected from her Hong Kong roots. However, her music has become a powerful medium for reclaiming her heritage. After forming the band Dharma Scout and later embarking on a solo career, she released her first full-length album, Rotten Bun for an Eggless Century, which explored her identity and featured traditional Chinese instruments. Liu's latest EP, Nothing or Something to Die For, showcases her dedication to cultural celebration, as she translated and re-recorded songs into Cantonese with the help of her father and fellow musician Emily Moss. With her upcoming performance at the Clock and Flap Music and Arts Festival in Hong Kong, Liu is excited to share her journey and connect with her family and heritage. In another initiative, the South China Morning Post highlights the Touring Central with Locals program launched by Hong Kong's Urban Renewal Authority, which aims to engage residents and visitors alike through free walking tours in Central and Xiang WAN. The tours, led by trained retired volunteers, offer a unique perspective on the area's history, culture, and cuisine, blending personal anecdotes with augmented reality experiences. Each volunteer guide has designed their route based on their experiences, showcasing local life and attractions, such as the iconic Central Mid-Levels Escalator and Hollywood Road. The initiative not only aims to boost local tourism but also fosters community spirit, allowing residents to share their stories and insights about the vibrant neighborhoods they call home. With plans to expand the program, the Urban Renewal Authority is committed to revitalizing the city's offerings and promoting Hong Kong as a premier destination. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6DO team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6DO brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, 
the 6DO team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6DO Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6DO Brief via email.